In this video, we're going to explore six insightful lessons from Buddha's teachings on handling insults. These lessons involve understanding non-reaction, assessing the source of insult, maintaining inner peace, choosing our reactions, transforming negativity, and cultivating compassion. Applying these teachings can significantly impact how we perceive and respond to insults, ultimately leading to a more peaceful and fulfilling life. Remember, it's not an easy journey, but stay strong and keep watching till the end. It could be a real game, changer in your life. Lesson 1. Understanding the concept of non-reaction, the Buddha and the insulting man scenario in this lesson, we delve into the idea of non-reaction when faced with insults, drawing inspiration from an enlightening scenario involving the Buddha and an insulting man. Imagine a situation where the Buddha is peacefully walking through a village, radiating tranquility and compassion. Suddenly, a man appears and hurls insults at him, trying to provoke a reaction. However, the Buddha remains completely unaffected, responding to the man's insults with silence and a gentle smile. This scenario holds a profound lesson for us on how to handle insults. It teaches us that our reactions to insults are within our control, and by choosing not to react, we can maintain our inner peace and happiness. When we react to insults, we often allow ourselves to be consumed by negative emotions like anger, hurt, or insecurity. These reactions not only disturb our mental and emotional well-being, but also escalate the situation leading to unnecessary conflicts and suffering. The Buddha's non-reaction demonstrates the power of choosing not to engage in the negativity. It is like a shield that protects our inner peace, allowing us to rise above the insults and maintain a sense of calm and balance. To better understand this concept, let's consider a practical example. Imagine you are at a family gathering and a relative starts making hurtful and demeaning comments about your appearance or life choices. The initial reaction might be to retaliate, defend yourself, or feel deeply hurt. However, by applying the lesson of non-reaction, you can take a different approach. Instead of responding with anger or defensiveness, you choose to remain calm and composed. Understanding that their insults are a reflection of their own insecurities or biases by not engaging in the negativity, you prevent the situation from escalating and maintain your inner peace. In this scenario, non-reaction allows you to break the cycle of negativity and avoid getting entangled in unnecessary conflicts. It frees you from the burden of carrying the hurtful words with you, enabling you to move forward with grace and compassion. Non-reaction doesn't mean suppressing your emotions or pretending that insults don't affect you. It means consciously choosing not to let those insults dictate your emotional state or action. It empowers you to respond with wisdom and kindness, rather than reacting impulsively out of anger or hurt. By practicing non-reaction, you develop emotional resilience and become less dependent on external validation. You recognize that insults say more about the person delivering them than they do about you. This understanding allows you to cultivate self-confidence and inner strength, leading to a more harmonious and contented life. In summary, the first lesson from Buddha's teachings on handling insults emphasizes the power of non-reaction. By choosing not to react to insults, we safeguard our inner peace and happiness. This lesson reminds us that our reactions are within our control, and by responding with silence, compassion, and understanding, we can rise above the negativity and maintain our emotional well-being. So stay strong and continue watching to explore the remaining valuable lessons that can transform the way you handle insults in your life. Lesson 2. Assessing the Source The lesson of the barking dog insults can often sting, leaving us feeling hurt, angry, or even defensive. However, Buddha's teachings offer us an insightful lesson on how to handle insults by assessing the source of the insult. By understanding the nature of the person or situation that delivered the insult, we can gain a deeper perspective and maintain our inner peace. Imagine walking down a peaceful street with beautiful houses and well-tended gardens. Suddenly, the dog starts barking loudly and aggressively at you. Initially, you might feel startled or annoyed by the sudden disturbance. However, if you pause for a moment and observe the situation, 
you'll realize that the dog's behavior has nothing to do with you personally. The dog is merely reacting out of its own fear or territorial instinct. You understand that it's not a reflection of your worth or character. Similarly, when someone insults us, it's essential to consider the source. Often, insults stem from the other person's insecurities, jealousy, or their own personal issues. Just like the barking dog, their actions are not a true reflection of our value as individuals. By recognizing this, we can detach ourselves from the hurtful words and maintain our inner peace. For example, imagine that you are dedicated to your career and work hard to achieve your goals. However, a colleague constantly undermines your efforts and mocks your achievements. If you take this insult personally, it may affect yourself. If team and hinder your progress, instead, by considering the source, you realize that your colleagues' behavior may stem from their own feelings of inadequacy or envy. Understanding this, you can choose not to internalize the insult and remain focused on your own growth and success. Assessing the source of an insult also allows us to respond with empathy and compassion. We understand that the person delivering the insult is likely experiencing their own internal struggles. By refraining from reacting with anger or defensiveness, we can choose to respond with kindness and understanding. This not only diffuses the situation, but also helps to foster a more harmonious environment. In another example, imagine you are driving and accidentally cut off another driver. In response, the driver starts yelling insults at you. Instead of responding with anger or insults of your own, you take a moment to assess the situation. You realize that this person may be having a bad day, dealing with stress or experiencing road rage. By considering the source and responding with empathy, you can defuse the situation and prevent it from escalating further. Lesson 3. Maintaining Inner Peace the example of the ocean remaining unmoved in Buddha's teachings on handling insults. One of the crucial lessons revolves around maintaining inner peace. This lesson encourages us to cultivate a sense of calmness and stability within ourselves, despite the insults or negativity directed towards us. To illustrate this concept, let's delve into the example of the ocean remaining unmoved. Imagine standing on a picturesque beach, observing the vastness of the ocean. You notice the waves crashing against the shore with great force, creating a tumultuous display. Despite the chaos on the surface, if you were to dive into the depths of the ocean, you would find an extraordinary sense of tranquility. The water remains undisturbed, unperturbed by the external commotion. Similarly, in the face of insults, we can learn to maintain our inner peace by developing a deeper understanding of our true nature. We often allow insults to affect us because we identify with them, believing that they define our worth or character. However, by realizing that insults are merely external events and do not define our essence, we can detach ourselves from their impact. Consider a scenario where someone insults you by calling you a failure. If you allow this insult to penetrate your core, it can disrupt your inner peace and trigger negative emotion. But if you cultivate the mindset of the unmoved ocean, you can choose not to react impulsively or take the insult personally. To practice maintaining inner peace, it is essential to cultivate mindfulness and self-awareness. By observing our thoughts and emotions without judgment, we can create space between ourselves and the insults hurled at us. This space allows us to respond with wisdom rather than react out of anger or hurt. For instance, if someone insults your appearance, instead of internalizing their words and feeling self-conscious, you can choose to recognize that beauty is subjective and their opinion does not define your work. By remaining rooted in your inner peace, you can respond with grace and understanding, understanding that their insult stems from their own insecurities or biases. Another crucial aspect of maintaining inner peace is practicing compassion, both towards ourselves and others. Compassion allows us to empathize with the person delivering the insult, recognizing that their actions stem from their own suffering. By understanding their pain, we can respond with kindness and forgiveness rather than allowing their words to disturb our inner peace. Lesson 4. Choosing to accept or reject. The gift metaphor in Buddha's teachings, the lesson of choosing to accept or reject insults, can be likened to receiving a gift. 
Just as we have the power to decide whether or not to accept a gift, we also have the ability to decide whether or not to accept an insult. By understanding and applying this concept, we can cultivate a sense of empowerment and control over our emotional responses. Imagine someone gives you a beautifully wrapped gift. You have the choice to either accept it graciously or reject it. If you accept the gift, you may open it and find something delightful and valuable inside. On the other hand, if you reject the gift without even opening it, you may miss out on something wonderful. Similarly, when someone hurls an insult at us, we can choose whether to accept it or not. By accepting it, we allow the insult to impact our emotions and well-being. However, if we choose to reject the insult, we regain our power and prevent it from affecting us negatively. Let's consider an example to illustrate this concept. Imagine you are at work and a colleague makes a hurtful comment about your abilities. If you immediately accept the insult and allow it to affect you emotionally, it may lead to a decrease in your self-esteem and confidence. However, if you consciously choose to reject the insult, you can maintain your self-worth and prevent it from impacting your overall well-being. In this scenario, rejecting the insult doesn't mean denying its existence or pretending it didn't happen. It means recognizing that the insult is not a reflection of your true worth or capabilities. Just as you have the power to reject a gift that doesn't align with your values or needs, you have the power to reject an insult that doesn't accurately represent who you are as a person. By practicing this lesson, we can develop resilience and inner strength. We become less dependent on external validation and more rooted in our own self-worth. This doesn't mean we become immune to insults or criticism, but rather we choose not to allow them to define us. Lesson 5. Turning Negativity into Positivity The mud and lotus analogy in this lesson. The Buddha teaches us how to transform negativity into positivity, drawing inspiration from the analogy of the mud and the lotus flower. This powerful metaphor demonstrates that just as a lotus flower blooms in muddy waters, we too have the potential to rise above negativity and flourish in the face of insults. Imagine a scenario where someone hurls insults at you, attempting to bring you down and make you feel small. These insults may be hurtful, triggering a range of negative emotions such as anger, sadness, or self-doubt. However, the Buddha encourages us to perceive these insults as the mud in our lives and to transform them into the lotus within us. The lotus flower is considered a sacred symbol in Buddhism, representing purity, enlightenment, and spiritual awakening. It begins its journey as a small seed in the muddy depths of a pond. Despite the unfavorable conditions, the lotus gradually emerges from the darkness, pushing through the mud until it reaches the water surface. There, it blossoms into a beautiful and radiant flower. Similarly, when faced with insults, we have the opportunity to rise above the negativity and cultivate positive qualities within ourselves. Instead of allowing the insults to define us, we can choose to respond with kindness, compassion, and understanding. By doing so, we transform the muddy waters of negativity into the blossoming lotus of personal growth and inner peace. Let's illustrate this concept with an example. Imagine you're at work and a colleague constantly belittles your ideas in front of others. This behavior not only undermines your confidence, but also creates a toxic work environment. Initially, you may feel angry, hurt, or defensive in response to the insults. However, by applying the lotus and mud analogy, you can shift your perspective. Rather than internalizing the insults and letting them dampen your spirit, you can choose to view them as opportunities for personal growth. Instead of retaliating with more negativity, you can respond with grace and understanding. Perhaps you approach your colleague privately and engage in an open conversation, seeking to understand their perspective. By doing so, you transcend the negativity and potentially foster a more harmonious work environment. In this example, the insults represent the mud, and your response represents the lotus. By transforming the negative energy into a positive and constructive approach, you not only protect your own well-being, but also create the possibility for growth and transformation in others. The lesson of turning negativity into positivity is a powerful reminder that we have the power to choose our responses to insults. 
It teaches us that insults do not define us, but rather our reactions and actions do. By cultivating a mindset of resilience and compassion, we can rise above the muddy waters of negativity and allow our inner lotus to shine. In conclusion, the mud and lotus analogy offers us a profound lesson in handling insults. It reminds us that no matter how challenging the circumstances may be, we have the capacity to transform negativity into positivity. By choosing to respond with kindness, understanding and personal growth, we can rise above insults and cultivate inner peace. So let's embrace the wisdom of this teaching and allow our inner lotus to blossom, even in the face of adversity. Lesson 6. Cultivating Compassion The parable of the wounded man in this lesson, we delve into the importance of cultivating compassion when faced with insults. The Buddha taught that responding to hostility with kindness and understanding is not only beneficial for others, but also for our own well-being. To illustrate this teaching, let's explore the parable of the wounded man. Imagine yourself walking along a path when suddenly you encounter a man who has been severely wounded. He is in excruciating pain, crying out for help. In this situation, how would you respond? Most likely, your natural instinct would be to offer assistance, to alleviate the man's suffering. The parable of the wounded man reminds us that insults like wounds are often the result of someone's pain, suffering, or ignorance. When someone directs an insult towards us, they're essentially revealing their own inner turmoil. It is crucial to remember this and approach the situation with compassion. For instance, let's say a coworker constantly belittles your ideas during team meetings. Instead of reacting defensively or returning the insults, take a moment to consider the possible reasons behind their behavior. Perhaps they are feeling insecure about their own abilities or are struggling with personal challenges. By cultivating compassion, you can respond to their insults with empathy and understanding. In the parable of the wounded man, the Buddha teaches that by responding to insults with compassion, we not only diffuse the negative energy, but also provide an opportunity for healing and growth, both for ourselves and the person who insulted us. When we choose to respond with kindness, we break the cycle of hostility and create a space for dialogue and understanding. To put this teaching into practice, Let's imagine another scenario. Suppose a family member insults your parenting skills in a hurtful manner. Instead of retaliating or harboring resentment, try to approach the situation with curiosity and compassion. Engage in a conversation with the intention of understanding their concerns and addressing any misunderstanding. By responding with empathy, you can foster a deeper connection and promote healing within the relationship. Cultivating compassion does not mean Compassion does not mean condoning or accepting hurtful behavior. It means recognizing the shared human experience of suffering and responding with kindness, understanding, and a willingness to find resolution. This practice not only benefits the person who insulted us, but also allows us to maintain our own inner peace and emotional well-being. 